Cool. Hey, everybody. Uh, I'm Laura Taco. I work at Cloud Bees. I'm here with uh, James and James. Um, they're going to be helping me tell you all about Jenkins X. You have to make this. I didn't make the rules, but you have to make this uh, gesture when you say Jenkins X. I don't know what happens if you don't. James gets very upset. So Jenkins X is an automated CI CD tool for Kubernetes, um, but it's a little bit more than that. Jenkins X came out of a need in the development community for a CI CD tool that was maybe a bit faster moving and very innovative. We kind of thought about all the great problems that Jenkins solves, and we thought, what would we do if we had Kubernetes in the cloud native ecosystem you know, 10 years ago? How would we solve those problems a little bit differently? And these problems that we attempt to solve with Jenkins X are representative of problems that you're all solving in your daily life as developers. So we see in the last five years a move from on-premise to the cloud. We see a move from VMs to containers. We see immutable infrastructure um, helping you do DevOpsy things at speed and reduce costs. We've seen also Kubernetes become sort of the de facto standard for container orchestration. That's help, helped us um, as developers move our applications from monoliths to microservices, which is great, but also introduces some challenges um, in orchestration, deployment, testing. And we know that we should be doing CI and CD because it helps us become um, part of more higher performing teams. And we can deliver business value to our end users faster. The trouble is like this um, sort of magical landscape that I've discussed with microservices and orchestration and Kubernetes and containers doesn't come for free. And there's actually quite a bit of challenge um, to get to your current world into kind of that future facing cloud native world. Um, a lot of the problems that development teams encounter are things like setting up the cloud and your Kubernetes environment, moving to containers, doing either lift and shift, greenfield, brownfield projects. Deploying those projects into Kubernetes is very challenging. Um, takes a little bit of, of time to kind of get the hang of it, understand this entire new ecosystem and landscape of tools. So all of these things kind of introduce friction and can make it harder for teams who want to adopt these uh, cloud native technologies and become higher performing from actually being able to do so, which is why we started working on Jenkins X. How does Jenkins X help you as a developer and help your team solve these problems? Um, one short answer is that it helps you automate those very key parts of the process. So whether it's installation, configuration, upgrading your application on Kubernetes, Jenkins X can help you do that. Um, it sort of bootstraps your entire development experience, including creating environments for you as a developer to work on, but then also things like CI and CD and the environments in staging and production themselves. It helps you with things like Docker images, Helm charts, um, getting pipelines bootstrapped. And it does all of this while giving you sort of the guardrails of a GitOps environment to help you um, do all of these things in a very traceable and, and auditable way to help you stay organized and make sure you have a really good, clear picture of exactly what's running where and everything that happened. One of the benefits of GitOps is that you get lots of feedback. Um, you can see these changes as, as they go into the repos and actually be able to make changes on changes to your environment inside of a Git repo. This all sounds great. So I'm sure you're all very itching to uh, get started with Jenkins X if you're not using it already. You can get started with Jenkins X, and James and James are going to give some wonderful demos um, in just a bit. But if you're curious sort of what's the very first thing that you can do to get started with Jenkins X, it's installing the command line tool. Um, there's a def couple different ways to install it. If you're on Mac or if you're using Linux, um, kind of your standard installation patterns, either using Homebrew or our good friend Curl, you can download the uh, command line tool. There's some documentation up on Jenkins-X.io. There's a getting started guide with some installation instructions there if you want to check out the documentation. When you install Jenkins X and start using it, 
to bootstrap your projects, you're going to come across um, a couple commands that relate to whatever public cloud you might be using. So for example, as a user, if I'm using Google Cloud, I'm going to use Jenkins X in the context of my Google Cloud account and not necessarily run things locally on my own laptop, but use the power of the cloud and actually introduce that in limit unlimited compute power into my own development workflow. So I can do things like JX create cluster GKE or AWS or AKS, whatever cluster management system um, or Kubernetes service you're using, to have uh, a cluster created for you directly from Jenkins X. And it kind of automates that uh, workflow for you so that you're not sort of fiddling with um, all those little knobs and, and levers that Kubernetes has. If you have a cluster already, you can also use the command JX install to get Jenkins X running and working with a cluster that you have already. And again, this is just a tiny little sliver of all the things Jenkins X can do for you when you're getting started. So be sure to check out the documentation to learn more. When you do one of these commands, let's say you've run create cluster, your very first experience as a developer is going to have um, this entire development tools environment managed by Jenkins X through the Jenkins X CLI. So again, the CLI is talking out to whatever public cloud account you've instructed it to do so. It's going to give you a complete development tools environment. So um, we have one um, version, actually the default now, running on with Tekton. So as Christy mentioned, Jenkins X and Tekton are um, very close, and, and we've already integrated. You're going to have a staging environment and production environment, which gives you everything that you need to work with Kubernetes locally, develop on Kubernetes, run tests, get fast feedback, and then using GitOps, promote changes to your application from your development environment to staging and then to production, which sounds pretty great. I'm pretty excited about it. So I'm going to invite James and James up to the stage to give you some demos on what this looks like in practice. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Thank you. Hello. So we're going to try a live demo now on Google Cloud and GitHub, uh, and let's see how it goes. So uh, as, as Laura said, we, uh, Jenkins X supports two execution uh, engines. We can either use static Jenkins servers as your CI engine, or we can use Tekton. Uh, we love Tekton, we think it's awesome, so Tekton's now our default execution engine because it's completely uh, serverless and cloud native so that we only run build pods when you need them and then everything tears down when you're not using it. So we're going to try a quick start, right? So we've installed Jenkins X, it's running on GKE right now, um, and we're going to type JX create quick start. So we have a whole bunch of different ways of creating projects. You can use JX create quick start to create a brand new project using Java, Go, Node, Rust, Python, Ruby, various different programming languages. If you're a Spring person, by the way, there's JX Create Spring, which uses the Spring Boot initializer thingy to create a new application. So we're going to create a new uh, Git repository. We're going to give it a funky name like KubeCon Rocks, say, uh, for example. OK, awesome. Good typing, James. Yeah, OK, that's brilliant. So we're going to create a brand new Git repository name. So we, we've created a new project. We, should we do Go? Yeah, let's do Go, because Go is cool. So we're going to do a Golang demo right now. Uh, so we've given it a, an organization. We've given it a Git re repository name. This is the initial Git repository, uh, Git commit. And then a couple of seconds later, if uh, github.com is up, uh, everything's looking good. So what we've basically done is created a brand new quick start. It's a Hello World Go microservice. Um, it's created the source code on your file system. It's created a Git repository. It's pushed the code up to github.com. Uh, this is the code right now on github.com that you can see. We've just created it a few seconds ago. So we've created a brand new microservice. We've created the source code. We've done a whole bunch of stuff behind the curtain. Uh, so we've created a Git repository. We've created webhooks so that whenever you do a Git merge or a pull request on that Git repository, it will trigger CI and CD. So we've automated all of the CI and CD with one command, which is pretty cool. So you don't have to write any Tekton CRDs. You don't have to look at YAML if you don't want. Uh, we've done CI and CD for you. So if we do, yeah, JX get build logs, we'll be able to see the pipeline running. Uh, there we go, the master pipeline. So because we've pushed to the master repository, What's triggered now is the release pipeline. So the release pipeline is going to 
uh, clone the code. It's going to tag in Git. It's going to create a new Git version. So it starts at 001, then 002, and so on and so forth. It's going to tag Git. It's then going to build the executable. In this case, it's a Go binary. We're going to push that to GitHub. We're then going to, though we've tagged GitHub or Git already, um, we're then going to make a Docker image. We're going to tag the Docker image with 001. We're going to push that to GCR, Google Container Registry. Uh, we're then going to make a Helm chart and tag that as 001. We're going to push the Helm chart to the Chart Museum uh, to store the immutable Helm chart so we can install this application on any Kubernetes cluster at any point in time. Uh, then we're going to do, we've already done it, we, we've created a pull request. You see at the bottom? So now we've done the release, we've tagged 001, we've pushed the Docker image, we've generated the Helm chart. Now we're going to promote 001 to our staging environment. We use something called GitOps to do promotion. And what that basically means is using a Git repository to store each environment's configuration. So staging is a Git repository. Production is a Git repository. So we have in a Git repository all the versions of all the apps that are in staging and all the versions of all the apps that are in production. So to do a promote, we basically just do a pull request to do a Git commit, which changes the versions of the application that's running in staging. So uh, we've done the pull. Has the pull request merged yet? Yeah, the progress merged. So now, because we've merged to master of the staging environment, a pipeline is going to be triggered. The Tecton pipeline is going to trigger on the master branch of the staging environment, which is then going to do kubectl apply of that Helm chart. Right? So in one command, we type one command in. We've got a Go microservice. Uh, is it running yet? I guess it just about is. It's promoting right now. So we type one command. We've got a Go microservice. We've got all the source code created. We've got CI and CD created. We've got Tecton pipelines to do releasing, pull requests, and promotion. And it should be running any minute now, which is pretty cool. So one command. One command, and we're good to go. Now, you could use any programming language you like. You can use Maven. You can use Gradle. You can use Python, PHP, .NET, whatever. We've got build packs for most programming languages. If you've got a funky programming language that we haven't covered yet, uh, uh, come and let us know. Join the community. We'll make a build pack for you. Uh, we've got pluggable build packs that you can extend to use any different tool or programming language or build tool or whatever you like. Uh, and there you go. Hello, world. Uh, so we've created a brand new microservice in Go, and it's in staging already. Now, way. <laughs> well played, James. Well played. I should say, by the way, just before this talk, I managed to trash my cluster. So thank you, James, for having a cluster that works. Uh, don't trash your cluster before a demo. That is a lesson there. Um, should we do a pull request? Should we do so let's walk through. So we did a release of the new project. Let's show you how to do a pull request. Now, an important thing to remember, by the way, is once you've imported a project or created a project, uh, developers just use Git and the, the, your editor of choice. It could be Vi, it could be Emacs, it could be IntelliJ, which is the best idea, or it could be even Eclipse. Um, use whatever tools you like, but developers then just sit in their source code and use Git. Developers don't need to know or care about Jenkins X and Tecton and all this wonderful CI CD stuff. It just kind of happens for you automatically behind the curtain. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a pull request. Let's do a code change. Um, look at this amazing Go code. It's awesome. Uh, so we're going to change that message to something really cool, like, yeah, that's really cool. Uh, so we're going to change the source code to the, to the, to the Go service. Hello, Basler, we love it. Yeah, we love Basler, it's awesome. So we've, we've changed the source code, so we're now going to do, a, oh, I, I, I do a branch first. Are you on a branch? Okay, sorry, I, I, I missed that. Okay, so we're going to do a git commit. <laughs> You're ahead of me. So we're going to do a git commit using normal git stuff, no, no weird magic stuff, just normal git. Yeah, that's a good message. Then we're going to do a git push. Awesome. Then are you going to do JX create PR? Yeah, go on, go on. So you can create a pull request however you like. You can use your IDE. You could use the github.com website, whatever. PR. Create PR. Just PR. Yeah, there you go. We have a command line tool that does it for you, if you like, uh, where you just hit return, and then, damn! OK, OK, forget that command. Let, let's, do it, let's do it by hand. <laughs> We, you could use Hub as well if you like Hub. Um, okay, damn, I'm sorry about that. That's my fault. Uh, okay, then we've got a pull request. If you click on the pull request, so we've just created a normal pull request. You could do this however you like using any tool of your choice, uh, preferably one that works. Um, and then now, because we created the pull request, the automated CI and CD is kicking in again. So whenever you push to master the master branch, we do a release and we tag everything and release it and promote it. When you create a pull request, we have a different pipeline for pull requests, which is similar. It's just not quite the same. So uh, 
when you do CI, we're used to kind of running tests and does your code compile and do all the unit tests run and all that kind of stuff, which is great. So we, we're doing that right now, but also we do something called preview environments. And a preview environment is a way of previewing your code change before you merge to master. Now, we all want to be high-performing teams, right? And we're all trying to go faster and improve and, go and get better feedback and iterate quickly. So we want to make it easy for our team members to review code changes before we agree to merge them. So the more reviews and testing we can do before we merge the code to production, the, the better we are, right? So a preview environment is a way of previewing the code change before you agree to merge. For example, it's surprisingly easy in Kubernetes to make an innocent looking change to an environment variable and all of a sudden you break your app, right? So the preview environment gives us a way of testing that the code still runs in a Kubernetes cluster, that the container builds, the container starts, the liveness checks are okay, the readiness probe hasn't buffed, and everything starts up okay. So we've done the pull request, a pipeline is running, hopefully now. Oh yeah, should we show the technical resources? Um, while we wait for this pull request to build, let's do kubectl get pipeline run. So here you can see all the different uh, pipeline. So pipeline runs are a, cube, a Tecton resource. Tecton makes a pipeline, a pipeline run, a task, a task run, and a pipeline resource, I think. Um, and each one of these is automatically created via the Jenkins X pipeline. So a Jenkins X YAML um, is a DSL, as Chrissy said. And we take that DSL and we generate the Tecton CRDs under the covers. So the CI and CD engine behind the curtain in Jenkins X is all completely vanilla Tecton. Um, you'll be able to use the Tecton CLI to look at it. You'll be able to use the Tecton dashboard if you like. There's also a Jenkins X dashboard to view it. Has the pipeline finished yet? Should we, should we look at the build logs of the JX get build logs? Whoa. Well. Whoa. Say some quick. OK, so that was the demo. It was awesome. Uh, <laughs> so just to walk through what, what should have happened under the curtain. So Jenkins X has a support for, oh, did it work? OK, there you go. So you see that URL there, if we open that URL. So you can see the pipeline that went green. Um, it's built the code. It's got this new hello message, which is awesome. Um, so this is code that's running in Kubernetes in a preview environment. So what's basically happened behind the curtain is um, the pipeline has run on the pull request. It's created a new Docker image, a preview Docker image. It's built the code, deployed it to a preview environment. A preview environment is just a temporary Kubernetes namespace. So each pull request gets its own unique namespace. We spin up a Kubernetes namespace. We deploy the code into that namespace. Then we expose the URL of the app running in there. And then we comment on the pull request, the URL to where the app's running. So all of your teammates, as soon as you do a pull request, all your teammates can, as soon as they see that URL up here, they can just click on the code and view the running code before you've merged the master, right? Now, if you're building a web UI, for example, and someone changes some CSS, if you're doing a code review of diffs on CSS, I don't know about you, but it's kind of hard to know what that's going to mean, right? You look at the diff and you think, you've changed the font, awesome. But what does it look like? With preview environments, you can click on the URL and you can see the effect of the code change running. Um, one thing we found, initially when we first made Jenkins X, we kind of thought we'd do things the traditional way. We'd uh, merge to master, we'd do a release, we'd move it to the testing environment, we'd look at it, and then we'd go to staging and production. What we've kind of found is, um, st if you have a single staging environment, that's kind of a single environment. So if you have many people making many pull requests, you have a single place to test. By using preview environments, you can test in parallel. Each pull request has a separate testing environment. So the more you use preview environments, the more you can do testing on each preview. So a preview is just a Helm chart to deploy the thing you're building plus arbitrary other dependencies. So your preview chart could be uh, MongoDB or Postgres, you could, you could deploy Kafka, you could deploy arbitrary backend services. And then your preview chart can also run system tests. So every time this preview environment's created, you could run arbitrary jobs, right? You could run Selenium tests, you could run Cypress testing, you could do BDD tests, any testing you like. So the more we use preview environments and the more we move testing back into the preview, we can test in parallel and dynamically spin up test environments for each pull request, which is pretty awesome. 
So there we go. Uh, we've created a new application in one command. We created one pull request. We got a preview environment. And then if we agree to merge that change, um, it will then merge to master. And then 002 will be created, and that will go to staging. Uh, a quick point on the environments, by the way. You can have as many environments in a team as you like. Um, we default out of the box in Jenkins X to have a staging environment and a production environment. So each team can just go to staging whenever they like, and then production whenever they like. We've made the default so that we automatically promote to staging, and you manually choose when to go from staging to production. What we'd like you to do is, over time, automate all of that so you automatically go to production. But we've left it as a kind of a safe default, so you automatically go to staging. Every merge to master, once it's merged, it's released and goes to staging automatically. You can change this if you wish and go manual. It's up to you. So we always go to staging, and then you manually choose when to promote to production. If you want 20 environments, just create new environments. An environment is a custom resource. Actually, do you want to do kubectl get uh, env on the command line? Uh, kubectl get, get env. So uh, Jenkins X uses custom resources just like Tekton. Uh, everything is a CRD, basically. So environments are a CRD, Git providers are a CRD, secrets are a CRD. Um, so each of our environments is defined as a custom resource. So at any point in time, you can create more environments. An environment has a Git repository. There's a the Git repository for each environment, and so on and so forth. You can use GitOps to manage the development environment as well. So when you're installing Jenkins X, you can choose to enable the GitOps option, which means it creates a Git repository for the development environment so that the, all of the installation of Jenkins X, so the version of Tekton you're using, the version of Jenkins X you're using, the Nexus, the whatever it is, is all managed in Git. So then when you do upgrades, you're doing pull requests on the development environment, which then does rolling upgrades of Jenkins X itself. So we can GitOps Jenkins X itself, which is awesome. So there we go. I think that's all the demos. Um, so we, one command, we created a new microservice, uh, one, um, one Git pull request that we got the preview environment, and then we merged to master, and we get a release. Any questions about Jenkins X at all? Yeah. Great question. Let me try to repeat what you just said. If you have a back end and a front end, how do I use preview environments and so forth? Which is a great question. Um, we've found this quite a lot. We do the same thing ourselves internally. Uh, we use Jenkins X to make Jenkins X, so we're, we're always iterating on Jenkins X to make it better, really, um, and make it work. Um, so a very common thing is you're writing a microservice like a front end, and you need a back end to test your front end. So how do you get the front end and the back end to work together? So a preview environment is defined in your source tree. Do you want to just open the uh, Git repository? Yeah, <laughs> you're ahead of me. Uh, Mind reader. So this is the Git repository for the app we just created. And the preview folder contains all of the Helm charts, which defines your preview environment. So you can add into your preview environment any dependencies you like. Right? You could add Mongo, you could add a back end and a front end and a whatever. Now, one interesting thing we found. So initially, we just thought you'd deploy all of the services you need in your preview environment, which is great. As soon as you have multiple teams working together on microservices, having to deploy other teams' microservices sometimes gets a bit tricky because different services need different configuration and all that kind of stuff. So another thing you can do is rather than deploying all the services in each preview environment, you can service link to the things you need. So rather than actually deploying 20 different microservices to test the front end, you can service link to the, those microservices running in your staging environment. So rather than actually adding 20 different Helm charts here, you could do service linking to link to those uh, services running in your staging environment. So we find ourselves doing service linking a little bit more so that you can link to your staging environment for your back end, but you deploy the new version of the front end or vice versa. So basically, you can define whatever you want in this Helm chart. In the Helm chart, you can define the requirements, so you can add new charts. And you can also edit the values YAML to configure those charts with preview-specific values. Right? Uh, there was another question over here. Yeah. Yes. That's a great question. So um, the question is, do we support other Git providers? Uh, so uh, we have two execution engines, Tekton and Jenkins. When you're using Jenkins, we support GitLab, GitHub, GitHub Enterprise, Bitbucket Cloud, Bitbucket Server, and Gitia. Uh, when you're using Tekton, we support GitHub. Uh, 
Um, but we are working on supporting more Git providers. Um, the, the limitation is nothing to do with Tekton, actually, or Jenkins X. The limitation is when we're using Tekton as the execution engine, we use a project called Prow, P-R-O-W, which is a webhook handler. It's more than that, but it's a webhook handler thingy that supports GitOps, uh, ChatOps, sorry. Um, so it's a way of ha having a conversation on pull requests. So you can type slash test to rerun a test and so forth, and slash approve to approve a pull request. So we, and you can get cats. You can get cats, which is the most important thing. So we love Prow. Prow is awesome. Uh, the one limitation is Prow is currently GitHub only. Uh, we have a Cosmin did a pull request uh, two days ago. Where's Cosmin? Cosmin did a pull request two days ago uh, to start to refactor Prow to use a pluggable uh, interface for working with Git providers. So Prow soon will have, is it merged yet? No, I guess not, nearly. So soon we'll have a pull request in Prow which lets us have pluggable Git providers. So currently Prow is GitHub only, but hopefully soon we'll support many Git providers. Uh, any other questions? See another cat. Do you, do you want to do another meow? <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> so we love Prow. Prow's awesome. We, oh, there you go. That's awesome. That's that's safe. Well, well played. So, uh, question over there. Yeah. I'm going to have to come closer. Multi-language platform. How does Jenkins X? Uh, do we support many languages? Is that the question? Yes. <laughs> so the, the, at the same time, so um, Jenkins X uses something called a build pack. Um, so we have build packs for lots of different programming languages, and based on the what we basically do, when you import a new project or create a new project, we look at the source code and we we detect the programming language, and based on the programming language, we pick the build pack. You can manually specify a build pack if you wish, but by default we. We have a build pack for most programming languages. So Go, Rust, Python, PHP, Rust, uh, Ruby. There you go. So we have a whole raft of different build packs. This is just a Git repository. So if you want to build your own build packs, you can just fork this repository, create your own repository, whatever. Uh, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to basically automate CI and CD for developers. So you're free to write your own pipelines if you want, but we would rather automate them for you. So we're trying to build a library of build packs for all programming languages. One thing I didn't mention, by the way, is we refactored our build packs so that we have a classic build pack, which just does releases of Node or Go or Java or Maven or whatever. Then we have the Kubernetes build pack that knows about Helm and GitOps and, that, and Docker images. Um, you could write your own build pack for different platforms than Kubernetes. We focus very much on CI and CD for Kubernetes. But if you wanted to write a build pack for VMs on VMware or whatever it is, um, you could write your own build pack that removes the Helm thing and uses VMs instead and uses Packer or one of those tools to make tables and AMIs and all that lovely stuff. So you could extend Jenkins X in different programming languages or in different deployment strategies or to use different tools, right? Uh, we're hoping to get some Spinnaker integration at some point so we could have a build pack for Spinnaker if you want to use Spinnaker as your deployment engine. Uh, so we're hoping to do that at some point. Uh, any other questions? And then it's, it's lunch. Great question, multiple clusters. So um, this is probably the first question I normally get asked, especially when we're talking with customers is, uh, do you support multiple clusters? So by default, when you just do JX create cluster GKE or AKS or EKS or whatever, uh, it creates three namespaces, one for development, one for staging, one for production. Uh, most people, when you're doing a real installation, you want production to be on a different cluster and staging to be a different cluster and development to a different cluster. So normally, in a real world scenario, you'd want to separate those uh, clusters. You probably also want to separate the service account. So a different you know, cloud account would run production and a different cloud account would run staging. And you probably want Chinese walls so they can't see each other or talk to each other or share any data and all that kind of stuff. Uh, we have, um, have multi-cluster support in Jenkins X using something called an environment controller. And what basically happens is you install your development cluster as normal, and then you find your production cluster, and you run JX create add-on environment controller. And that installs this tiny little controller, which is basically Tekton and one other microservice. And that 
basically deploys to staging or production. So in staging or production, those are typically locked down clusters with very uh, strict RBAC and security and yada, yada, yada. Um, the only thing you need to run in those clusters is this, these two little controllers, uh, the, well, the environment controller, which is two little microservices, and that's basically the thing that gets the webhook from GitHub, GitHub or whatever your Git provider is, and does the kubectl apply, basically. There you go. So it's a small little microservice. So your production environment is then just this tiny little microservice, and then that's it. So production and staging can be on any cluster, in any account, it's completely separate. And the only thing you really need for the environment controller is you've got a Git repository and a Docker image registry, and you can see where your Helm charts live. So apart from that, it's completely isolated. Yeah. Any other questions? Hey, hi, Craig, hey. Do you have a question? I was struggling slightly to hear that, but was that, do you automatically create pipelines on pull requests, or do you need to approve them and whatnot? Yeah. Yes. Yes, it's a great question. So the general gist, I think, is, uh, do you only run pipelines if contributors create a pull request and you don't automatically run pipelines? So when we're using Tekton as the CI engine, we use Prow, which automates the triggering of uh, pipelines on pull requests. Prow uses something called an owner's file. So only people who create pull requests who are in the owner's file gets automatic CI created. So if some random person comes along and creates a pull request on your project that says, um, email me your secrets from the cluster or something kind of dodgy or, or Bitcoin mining in, in the pipeline. Um, the pipeline doesn't run by default. A, 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 an approver has to do slash approve or slash okay to test. So a, an approver has to say okay to test. Then if an approver says okay to test, then Prow then triggers the pipeline. And then once the pipeline has been triggered, if ever you want to rerun the pipeline, you do slash test. Um, and you can rerun the test whenever you like. You can actually define many pipelines. So we have a whole bunch of BDD tests. Whenever we do a new release of Jenkins X, we test on all sorts of different Kubernetes clusters. Each BDD test is a separate pipeline in Jenkins X, and we can test all of them independently or all together by typing slash test all, slash test cheese, slash test whatever. So we love Prow. Prow is doing this magic for us, basically. It's doing the, Prow is the thing that given a pull request, it decides when to run pipelines on the pull request. Yeah, so great question. Any other questions? And then it's lunchtime. Go for it. Can Spinnaker and Jenkins, yes. The, the quick, the, so can Jenkins X and Spinnaker work together? The quick answer is yes. So Jenkins X is really trying to reuse the best of breed open source tools we can find to give you a great developer experience. So we, under the covers, we're using Tekton, we're using Helm, we're using Kanika, we're using Scaffold. We'll use anything we can find that helps people uh, be productive. We've not done it yet, but we would love to see a build pack for Spinnaker so that we can do CI and CD with Jenkins X orchestrating Spinnaker or Helm or kubectl apply or whatever it is. So the quick answer is we'd love to see uh, a Spinnaker integration. One of the things I'm the most excited about CDF is really seeing Jenkins, Jenkins X, Tekton, and Spinnaker in a foundation together so we can foster that collaboration and integration. So the plan is definitely to integrate the two. Yes. Great question. Uh, oh, another question. Do, great question. Do we support Jenkins Shared Library? By Carlos, who's here? Uh, where's Carlos? Uh, anyways, hey, Carlos, who wrote the Kubernetes plugin, by the way? Awesome for Jenkins. Uh, well played, well played, Carlos. Uh, <laughs> which is great. So if you're using the Jenkins uh, server as the execution engine in Jenkins X, it's using Carlos's plugin to implement the build pods. Um, so the question was, do we support shared pipeline libraries? So um, 
which is a great question. So the quick answer is, if you're using Tekton, there is no Jenkins, so there is no shared library. But Jenkins X pipelines support something like shared libraries. We use build packs, which let you have reusable um, YAML of pipeline steps. So we have something like shared pipeline libraries in Jenkins X. But if you literally have a Jenkins file, and you literally have a Jenkins shared library, and you wish to use it, um, you can either use the Jenkins server as the execution engine for your team, or we support Jenkins as an app inside Jenkins X. So Jenkins X has an, uh, an extension model where you can install different apps. Uh, one of those apps is called Jenkins, just to be a slightly meta. So you can install a custom Jenkins server inside Jenkins X using Jenkins X, and then you can have some pipelines run in the Jenkins server and some pipelines run in Tekton. So you can have kind of a mixed world where if you've already written a Jenkins file and you've created that Jenkins file and you want to keep it, that's great. Use a Jenkins server for that. If you want to go serverless and automate your CI and CD with uh, Tekton, do that as well. So you can have some projects using Jenkins files and some projects using Jenkins X YAML. So we can support both at the same time. Any other qu another question? Go for it. There was no Jenkins server in the demo today. There was not a single Jenkins server. Everything was 100% Tekton. However, if you create a cluster, when you create a cluster and install Jenkins X, you get a choice of using Jenkins or Tekton. The demo is identical, actually, with using Jenkins or, or Tekton. It looks the same. It's got the same CLI, the same, uh, uh, the same commands, the same. It looks and feels the same. Yeah. We have a UI coming fairly sh shortly that visualizes pipelines and build logs and uh, environments and promotions and all that kind of stuff. And again, that looks the same. Whether using Jenkins servers or Tekton, it looks and feels the same. Basically, under the covers, we're making custom resources for everything, so it just looks the same whether using Jenkins or Tekton. Uh, another question. Great questions. Keep them coming. Uh, great question. The, the question was basically, how, how much resources do you need for your cluster? Um, it depends. Uh, it depends. Uh, the quick answer is, we don't know. Just uh, enable auto scaling, and that will tell you. Uh, is the quick answer. Um, one of the things we haven't quite done yet, we're, there's quite a few little microservices. If you do kubectl get pod, there's quite a lot of pods running uh, for controllers that are watching CRDs and doing various things. Um, there's quite a few of them, and we, we should uh, auto scale those really. Um, oh, I haven't mentioned it yet. We support Knative now. So if you install Knative into your cluster, um, once you've installed Knative, all of the pipelines look the same and everything works the same. But rather than making a Kubernetes deployment and a Kubernetes service for your app, we create a Knative service so that your app becomes serverless and scales up and down automatically thanks to Knative. Um, and similarly, your preview environments then scale down when they're not in use and scale up on demand, which is great. Um, one of the bits of tech deck or th that we want to do is make every microservice inside Jenkins X serverless so that everything scales down to nothing when you're not using it. But right now, there's a bunch of microservices. So the Tekton controller is always running. Hooks or hook inside Prow is always running. We'd like to make that uh, more serverless so that it can just scale to zero. So the aim is to be scale to zero. It's just going to take a little while to do that. I mean, even Knative, it doesn't scale to zero itself. So it's going to take a, a little while to get there. But the aim is to scale to zero, but yes. But just try it, really. We have found, by the way, a small number of big nerds is better than lots of little nerds, you know, which is a general thing. So have a go, go large on your nerds and, and auto scale them down. And any other questions? Go for it. Is there any kind of secret management? Great question. Uh, and the person who did all the work is sat right over there, Coswin. So we, out of the box, if you just to create Jenkins X, we assume just we're using Kubernetes secrets and that's it. But there is a dash dash vault option when you install Jenkins X, which if you do dash dash vault, we install the vault operator, which means all secrets are then maintained and stored in vault. So you can trash your cluster, recreate it. We did this because we kept deleting our production cluster. Uh, it's surprisingly easy to do, delete production cluster. Um, so we, we've, we, through a uh, trial and error, we found we needed to recreate production really quickly. So we've, we've moved all of our secrets into Vault now. So we can trash the production cluster by accident and then bring it back really, really quickly now. Um, so if you use Vault, basically all secrets are then stored in Vault. Then everything else is stored in Git. So all, all the non-secret stuff is in Git, and everything else is in Vault. So you can trash your cluster, bring it back up whenever you like, and you're good to go. Oh, yeah, here, here's another cool thing. 
one thing we found to, so the first thing was we went with a vault operator, which is great. And then the next thing we found is we wanted to make it easier to inject into Helm charts secrets from vault. So we have this nice little URL thingy that if you have your values YAML, so this is tr traditional vanilla Helm stuff, but if your values YAML includes vault URLs, we, we automatically use the vault operator to fetch those secrets and inject them into the Helm chart. So it's a really easy way of using the vault operator, but from inside Helm. So that you just do vanilla Helm stuff, but we inject your secrets from Vault for you, which is awesome. Any other questions? And then we can eat. No questions? Well, thank you very much. Oh, there's a talk on Thursday, right? Thursday. There's a talk on Thursday about JGZX. If you want to see a bigger demo, we'll probably even demo the UI then as well, which will be awesome. So thank you very much. Enjoy the conference. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.